Yes, The Crow, 2024. I saw it. I wish I did. Directed by Rupert Sanders. He continues to do mediocre adaptations of beloved cult classic franchises. This movie is another example of that. Um, I don't know why studios continue to give him money to get, continue to have faith in him, but here we are. Here are the writers. Here's what they've done. If you don't see a lot of credits, too bad. That's what Lionsgate, that's what the studios decided to hire these guys, and, and, and you get what you get. I'm going to try to break down the story, and then I'm going to talk about some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like. Movie is about Eric Draven. He is a tortured kid. He's experienced a lot of death in his life. The movie opens up with him, you know, walking to his home in an undisclosed location. It could be in the Florida swamplands. It could be in Louisiana. It, 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 it's hard to kind of decipher where he's where he lives. Uh, the movie doesn't state locations of where they are. But anyway, uh, he walks and he sees a white horse. This is also taken from the comic books. Eric often dreams of a white horse. White horse is in danger. It's been, it's been it's wrapped around a barbed wire, kind of jumped over a barbed wire fence, and it's cut and it's killing it. And Eric reaches down, and as he's reaching down, as he's a he's a child, it's kind of flashback into his you know his past. As he's reaching down to try to save that horse, <clears throat> there's a voiceover of him talking about you know when you experience death, it kind of leaves a scar on you, and yada yada yada, and you know things that don't heal, and some people who experience so, so much grief and so much death, you know they don't come back from it or whatever. Yeah, that that yeah, and in the same time, the horse perishes. His his mom, I, I would assume his mom perishes. It, the the movie does not clearly articulate what we're seeing. It just shows images, and then you're supposed to interpret those images as okay. I I I assume this is what they're meaning, and what they their intent in showing me. He wakes up from his dream from being a kid, seeing the hurt horse, and he's 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 woken up. And he wakes up into this rehab center and he's been taking drugs. You can see all the tats, like the movie does a, a terrific job of the, the tat cam. Like it shows all this tats and, and 4K detail and you can see him and, you know, all the things that he's dealing with inside. He's, he's put on his skin and I have no problem with the tattoo culture. Those who love tattoos, I have no, this is not a slight to you. What kind of just, dis- it's kind of distracting because I, I want to know. Eric as an individual and the tats kind of get in the way. So he's in a rehab center. He's trying to, you know, deal with his issues. You know, the, the facility is trying to explore the psyche of Eric, you know, how, why are you so violent? Why we need to t- teach you how to deal with your anger issues and stuff like that. And so they show like this whole montage of, you know, other rehab, um, customers <laughs> um trying to antagonize him trying to get a rise out of him he doesn't get a rise out of him and then it flashes back to a woman she's entering some place uh she's being chased she talks to fk to who plays shelly and she said oh my god they found out um I-, I need you to i need you to come quick um they're, they're gonna they're gonna come after you you know you need to get out of here and apparently this girl has some information on something that happened between her and shelly and she's trying to flee, flee for her life. FK Twigs is 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 disheartened. She's trying to figure out what's going on. She's trying to talk to her friend. Her friend gets accosted, gets killed in a really creepy way by the main baddie who whispers in her ear. And the things that he whispers, he has like the voice of like the devil. So basically, he the whole the whole point of this individual is that he sold his soul to devil and to avoid being sent to hell. This is spoilers, by the way. So if you don't want to hear it, you know, fast forward this to avoid going to hell. He sacrifices young, innocent people. He's done it with criminals. He's done it with murderers, but they don't have the same efficacy as when he uses innocent people. And lo and behold, and and I'll come back to this in a little bit. Uh, lo and behold, he uses his voice and what the voice does, it gets into your mind and it twists your mind. So basically it tells you to kill yourself uh, or tells you to do these horrible things. So the person, the, the girl that was brainwashed by this guy just a couple minutes ago, she takes a fucking ice pick or whatever knife and just jabs her neck. And, and from these first moments of violence, you tell this is a different tone of the film. Fast forward a little bit. Shelly, she's on the run. The people, 
that are coming after her for a thing that she has evidence on. Um, mainly she has evidence on the bad guy's power. Um, they are stalking her. She runs into a cop because, you know, the cops are kind of coming into her view. She runs into them, drops her purse. Her purse has all these drugs in it, you know, conveniently. So instead of her getting kidnapped by the villains, she gets arrested. Instead of going to jail, she goes to a fancy rehab facility. And that's where Eric and Shelly meet. And this is some of the things I like. I like how this film explores a little more in detail about Eric and Shelly's relationship. How, you know, they're both, you know, drug addict, wayward individuals, both tortured individuals. But they find some, they find each other in this weird, creepy, weird, palatious rehab center. And it's almost like a Harley Quinn Joker type of thing. And I think that's kind of where the director was kind of getting out. I want to kind of have a Joker-esque and a Harley-esque without naming that. And it's very, it's very on your nose when you see it. It's very on your nose like, oh, okay, this is where we're going with this. But Bill Skarsgård and FKA Twigs, they make it believable that, the, that they're in a relationship, that they love each other. I think the movie does this too much where we're seeing too much of the relationship, but it's more than what the 1994 version did. And with that, I kind of give it some leeway because I kind of want to figure out, I kind of want to know a little bit more of the relationship. I think the 1994 version did it more tastefully because Shelly, she was more of a plot device. She's a more of a plot device in this movie, but they give her a little more screen time. They give this Shelly a little more screen time, a little more, you know, dialogue for her to be in the film. So, you know, I guess kudos to the writers and director for that. But yeah. Fast forward a little bit, they are on the run, so to speak. This is where things kind of fall apart, where they're in rehab. The villains figure out where Shelly actually is. They track her down to the rehab facility. The pair figure out where they're coming from, and they kind of escape through like this underground like laundry area. And then they run through the woods and hitch a ride on a car and escape into the city and go back to Shelly's very fancy apartment make out and they want a plot of what to do next. So I don't know the urgent sense of urgency of they're being chased, but the pair does not act like they're being chased. They don't, they don't act like they're being stalked. They're, 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 they're in love. They're enjoying each other. They're, 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 they're fucking, they're, they're, they're kissing. They're enjoying one another, which is great, but there's people after them. And you don't get the sense of urgency from the pair, which is kind of weird. Over the course of them in their nice, like, I guess, honeymoon phase, they go to a bar. One of Shelly's associates who knows about the video that was there recording that video runs into her and tells her, like, listen, I'm going to remind you. They're after me. I'm leaving town. You should come with me. She looks at Eric. No, no, I don't want to leave. Uh, we can't leave yet. I'm here with Eric. We're dancing. We're having fun. Yada, yada, yada. He's like, listen, I, I understand that, but they're going to kill you if you stay. And she's like, she, you don't hear her say these words, but she turns back to Eric and Eric's like, Look, who the fuck are you talking to? Who the fuck is she talking to? And he doesn't approach the guy. He just stands where he is. Um, and then Shelly runs back to Eric and he's like, who the, who the hell was that guy? He's like, I'll, I'll explain later. I'll explain later. They run back to, she's like, well, let's go back to your apartment. Let's go, let's go to your apartment for a minute. He's like, okay, cool, whatever. I didn't, I, I didn't know he had an apartment, but you know, I thought it was, he was just in rehab. He was a homeless guy, but I don't know. Um, anyway, <clears throat> they go back to Eric's apartment, this nice, like loft with the elevator. You can use the elevator and rise up and open the gates and he opens the gates, closes it right behind him. Um, Shelly goes on be, before him. And now he's turned the corner to meet Shelly. She, he hears her screaming. And that means the villains caught him. Surprise, right? They kill Shelly by putting a plastic bag over her head. They put a plastic bag over Eric's head. And <clears throat> they die. Fast forward, Eric is now in the crossroads. Um, a land where, you know, it's not quite heaven or hell. You know, like limbo. And there's this guy who I would assume is either death or the devil, some type of spirit. Forgive me. I've not read the comic, um, but he appears to be a very mystical, powerful entity who's helped guiding Eric to his new, this new realm. 
and apparently Eric finds out that, oh shit, I'm, I'm dead. And the guy tells him, listen, you, it's up to you whether you want to go back, whether you want to go back to land of living. And he's like, what? And he does the Dr. Strange ancient one push and Eric kind of falls back and, you know, slow mo, you know, the, you know, the thing. And he wakes back up in his apartment and I'm going to like fast forward most of this, but essentially the crow, this version of the crow, it's not very like martial art Kung Fu. That's like this Eric, he doesn't have those skills. He's very raw. He's very untrained. And I think that was the, that was the goal. That was the intent of the direction direction. And so basically Eric, he's learning how to wield the power of the crow. He's learning like, okay, oh, if I get shot, it hurts. Duh. But I heal from it. So I'm not, I'm not quite alive. I'm not quite dead. I'm kind of like immortal. And over the course, he gets beat up. He gets slashed. He gets run over. Um, he gets shot again. He gets stabbed. And each time he comes back into the crossroads, he gains a little more insight. You don't really... You don't really see this. You see the guy, you see the, the, the mystical one talking to him and, and telling them these things. Listen, you have the powers of the crow. Um, you can go back and fix what's right. And that's kind of like the tagline from the 994 version, you know. And as Eric dies and comes back to the crossroad, he gets more insight, he gets more power. And then towards the end, he decides that, okay, I need to, in order for me to fully embrace the crow, and this is what the kind of mystic guy said, in order for you to fully embrace the power of the crow, you have to love Shelly completely. You have to love her un unvarnished, unvarnished. There can't be any doubts in your love for her. And he sees the video, uh, fi he finally sees the video of what Shelly did. And Shelly, she was brainwashed by the guy. Um, he whispered these things and got her to do these horrible things, these horrible killings. And that's what his intent, he, he, he picks up girls, he picks up young people, he makes them do horrible things. He picks up innocent people, he makes them do horrible things, and he kills them. This is also a contradiction of him actually killing those people, those same people that he, ha he hires to do horrible things, that contradicts like, his like, tagline as far as, like, in order for me to stay among the land of the living and, and escape hell, I have to kill innocent people. But these people aren't innocent anymore. They've done horrible things, so they're not truly innocent anymore, but I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm getting a tangent. Anyway, um, Eric sees what Shelly has done and it, it, it kind of rocks to his core. He gets shot one more time and the guy's like, listen, you can't go back. Like that, that's it. You couldn't, you couldn't do what you had to do. Um, this is it. He's like, no, 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 there, there has to be a way. There has to be a way for me to do this. Um, I, I love her. He's like, no, you were, you had your doubts. You know, you, you he's like, he's like, listen, I, I, I didn't know before. I didn't know that she was brainwashed. Now I do. There has to be a way for me to go back and save her. And the guy was like, okay, but like, once you do this, there's no going back. Like you can save her, but you probably will not see her ever again. He's like, okay, fuck it. My soul for hers. If I can't be with her, then I want her to kind of take my place. I want her to go back and I'll stay here. I'll stay in this area or I'll stay in hell. I don't care, which is cool. I, I like that. I like that trade that he kind of makes. Um, it, it kind of ties into the whole love theme. It ties into the you know tragic love story and all that stuff. But the way it's written, it's very hammy. It's very like on your nose. There's no gravitas to it. And that's for most of the film. There's, there's no gravitas. There's no weight to the film. It's just very matter of fact. You know, it's very like here, here you see it. You see him snap some guy's neck. You see, you know, this person betray this person. And you don't feel anything for any, any of the characters. You don't, there's no empathy there's no understanding there's no wanting to understand it's just oh you're just wanting the, you're just watching these scenes as they as they roll down by checklist so anyway <clears throat> he says fuck it i'll i'll trade my soul for hers i'll i will kill everyone on this list i will kill the kill the big bad and when it's done you or the hell can have my soul and she can go back so he does you know the jesus christ pose the crow, the crow tech, the bird tech. There's so much, so many birds, and it's like they, they went overboard with a lot of the crows. Like, I mean, you didn't have to have like a million freaking crows. They had so many fucking crows, and some of the crows would just look off. The CG looked god awful. Um, there's like maybe one or two scenes where I was like, yeah, that that's a good scene. You know, him walking 
down the alley and the crow kind of flying by behind him in a nice like silhouette. That was like one of the only scenes I was like, yeah, that that's a good, that's a good shot. But anyway, he does Jesus Christ pose. The big crow, the crow that's been hot following him, I'll call him Jeff. Jeff the crow swims into his back, fl- flies into his back, and he starts gaining the power. And then they do a, a Blood Brothers pack. So he he slashes uh Skarsgard's hand. And then the he sl- and then the mystic one slashes his own hand. And they do a, a grab, and then their blood mixes with one another. And then Eric, his eyes start to turn black, and he can actually see the crow. So he now has full access of the crow's power. And he feels the power, and then that's it. He goes back, he wakes back up after he got like a gunshot from his last death. He got a gunshot to the chest. And then that's where like the third act from then on is just nothing but unadulterated violence. It's just him just slashing people's heads open, him doing curb stomps on people's heads, him going to like the opera and just, you know, doing John Wick style, like just deaths on, on everybody. You know, the blood is ramped up to 11. The violence is ramped up to 11. They have opera sing at the same time. I don't like the, the opera music that they're playing. It, it doesn't mesh well with the, the fight scenes. The fight scenes are sloppy they're raw they're like he's he's not sometimes he connects with people sometimes he's not connects with people it's very messy they try to do like an old boy type vibe to it but it just doesn't it, i don't feel the weight of it I, I i understand what they're trying to do but it just doesn't it doesn't translate well he kills all these people he cuts off a couple people's heads he cuts off you know the two bad people's heads that are in the opera house i think they're the last two and he figures out where the big bad is and the big bad is in this big palatial like mansion somewhere out in the woods no guards no guards protecting him and i think this is what the villain wanted i want him i want eric to come to me so that i can kill him and take his powers and become the crow just like in this just like in the old version you know they, they do it in a in a roundabout way but it's the same the same intent the big the bad guy wants to take the power of the crow Eric finds him and uh, he finds the big bad sitting in front of a, a boudoir, um, you know, getting ready for something, you know, and uh, they start talking and the bad guy, you know, approaches him and as I'm, I'm, I'm talking to Eric, I'm in my mind, I'm watching Eric, I was like, don't you know, you know his powers, you know what he's capable of, but you're not doing anything. And the guy walks towards his side and starts whispering his whole thing and Eric falls over and the two are like sharing powers and Eric is having all these memories and they hold hands or the share of blood. And now both of them are kind of like transported back into the crossroads. Cause Eric kind of wakes up from his, from the illusion that the guy was trying to put on him. So they're both now in the same realm. They're both in the crossroads. And basically Eric's like, I know what you were trying to do. That was my intent. I wanted to bring you into my realm. I wanted I wanted you to kill me so that, you know, I could take you to, I can finally destroy you. And basically there's this big, it was not really a big fight. It's more like he drags him into the crossroads. He starts playing like disappearing acts with the villain. And then there's like these like demon worms in the water within the crossroads and they come and they get the guy and he pushes them just like the mystic, you know, do the Dr. Strange thing, pushes them into the, water and the guy gets ripped apart by these demon hell eels and he just ripped his face off and once the guy gets pulled under shelly gets pulled up into from the from the dark depths of the hell or you know death or whatever and he's like hey you're back and she's like she's like yeah i'm here and he's like She's like, oh my god! I, I thought I'd never see you again. He's like, I, I, I knew this would work. I, 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 I knew I'd see you again. And he's like, okay. And he's like, but th- this is it. I, I can't, I can't, I can't go with you. He's like, what are you talking about? No. What did you do? What did you do? And I was like, uh, I made a, I made a deal, and and it worked out. So you, you get to go up, and I get to stay here. But it's okay because you know I love you. And she's like, okay. And then the mo- movie does like these montages of. You see Shelly in the land of the living now. She's on stage. She's singing. She's getting on with her life. You don't see her crying. You don't see her moping over the fact that Eric is gone. 
the only time you see her crying is like when she comes back to life and for some reason what eric did sped back time in a way but sped four times so basically shelly comes back to life at the exact moment that she was she was killed she comes back to life in eric's loft and eric is dead so basically all the things that eric was doing prior to shelly being killed during shelly's death it, it happened and it didn't happen you know it, because like there's a tattoo that he had on his hand and it wasn't finished but he finished it for himself and that tattoo is now finished but he's he's dead it's weird it's like if i'm explaining if the if if you're hearing the words that are coming off and you, they, they don't make sense that's kind of how i was when i was saying it. it was like i was like so so did he wind back time if you wound back time then none of this mattered that that means that it would i would assume that you know everybody that he killed would still be alive because we're, we're or did he just bring shelly back through time i don't know i don't know it it, it was really really weird but he starts talking about, you know, you know, I, I, I know what I did was right. And I know that someday, you know, we'll see each other again. And then you see at the, towards the end of the, in the movie, you see Eric kind of walking through the crossroads and the bird tech is on full display. They bring the bird, bring Jeff back and just starts flying. And all the, all the millions and millions of crows uh, start flying. And then they do that whole Marvel Spider-Man where you see one crow, two crow, three crows. And they come into the in view, and it just flies through into the screen, and the screen turns black, and that's it. That's it. It's over. Okay. So that was a long recap. And um, yeah, this movie. I don't think I'll see this movie again. I don't think I want to see this movie again. I understand why they wanted to distance themselves from the 1994 version, and that's understandable, but. If the original director says, don't remake this. If Brandon Lee's sister's like, please don't make this. If Ernie Hudson says, hey man, please don't make this. If Jason Momoa, who was originally attached to this thing, who was originally attached to it, thinking that it wasn't going to be anything related to the 1994 version, and then they made it to the 1994 version, and they're trying to rewrite it. He's like, I don't have time for this shit. If all these actors that were originally supposed to be in this role were like, listen, um, don't remake the 1994 version don't reimagine it just do an entirely new crow like if you're doing an entirely new crow with a entirely new cast nothing related to the old then that would be great this movie kind of qualifies as not related to the 1994 version but you're using eric draven the name eric draven and, and bren lee captured that character so well and it's so iconic why why fuck up a good thing like I said in my review to the trailer of The Crow, I don't have any issues with the actors. They were dealing with what they were given. And that's, there's nothing to be said to that. You know, we, we, we had a job to do. We did it. But you can tell this movie was chopped up. You can tell this movie had different tones. You know, you tell they, they want to tell more of the relationship, but they ran out of time. This movie is like nine minutes longer than the 1994 version. And you could tell where there's scenes where they went too long. They showed too much. They were quite inconsistent. There's characters on in, in the movie that are shown. They're not explained. And then they disappear completely. You don't know exactly where they went. You, you don't know why they were there other than for them to say, here's this character. You know, um, I mentioned in my trailer view, I hate the look of the crow. And... For good reason. Apparently, Rupert Sanders, oh God, stylized himself. He he said, you know, when I was growing up, I had that you know that that hair, that type of hair, that punk rock hair, you know, grunge hair, whatever. I had all these like, I love that the tats and scene. Like, I wanted to capture that. I wanted to capture that vibe. I kind of meshed, like, you know, characters like Post Malone with all his tats and stuff like that. You know, all these rappers and singers down. And I wanted to find like a nice middle ground because I didn't want to, I didn't want to capture what, you know, Alex Proyas did in the 1994 version of The Crow. I wanted to do my own. So I just put myself in, in the role of The Crow. And I, I, 
it again it harkens back to what they did with DMC, and I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna retread that ground. I, I I don't feel like it. The point is, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And I I I really wish they either found another director to do this, found another group of writers to write it, or just didn't do it at all. But they did it, and we have it, and it's out, and. It was delayed from June 7th. I was planning to do a review on June 7th. Thank God, like, that didn't happen. So now we're here now, and all throughout the movie, all, I was trying to give it the best shot. I was trying to go into this movie with an open mind. I was going to say, I'm not going to have any of my biases. I'm, I'm going to try my best to leave the 1994 version where it is and look at this as a complete separate work. And no matter, every time I saw a scene, I was like, Go on, finish the scene. Don't cut. And in, and me and immediately as I was thinking it, they cut to another scene. I was like, so can we explain the past scene that we were talking about? Is there a reason why that was shown? There's, there's no, there's no follow through. There's no weight to the film. There's no, there's no gravitas. The music choices are great, but they come in like really weird times. It's almost like watching like Suicide Squad, you know, the, the, the one with, um, the original one with uh, Margot Robbie and Will Smith. Um, it was David Ayer. Yeah, the David Ayer one. Like, it's like, what? can we just stay on one scene? Can you just fully stay on one scene? And then once that scene happens, go on to the next scene. Or, you know, provide a little bit of subtlety in what the next scene will be. Like, th there's none of that. It's just a paint by numbers checklist of just, of just shit. Let's, let's, let's just bomb it you know, CGI birds and let's vomit violence and let's, let's ramp up the tats. Let's ramp up, you know, the sex, let's ramp up all this stuff to kind of keep you locked in, keep you engaged. And then when you walk out of the film, you forget most of it. Like I, I was trying my best. I had this, like, I was going to do a review last night and I was like, I, I couldn't, I was so fucking tired. I was like, I don't want, I, I want to go to sleep. I want to go sleep. I want to marinate it and then come back in marinate on what I want to talk about and then come back in. But yeah, that's, <clears throat> sorry, I got, I'm trying to get over sick sickness. That's, that's, that's my review. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope you guys like it. This is my 50th video. I'm really proud that we got this far. I really wish, I really wish I could have seen another movie, but I did it for you. I want you to know that I did it for you, YouTube. I did it for you. and. I'll continue to do it for you. I'll continue to torture myself and watch horrible movies. If that's what you guys want, like tell me what other movie you want me to see and review. If you, if you like this one and I'll, I'll put myself through it. I'll hate myself, but I'll put myself through it. I don't, I don't care anymore. I don't have any, I don't, I don't have, I don't have any pride anymore. So if you like what I had to say, feel free to like, share, subscribe. Um, I really appreciate it. We really appreciate all the comments, um, and thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Tabs out.